Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84 and welcome to another video. I was recently on vacation in the Jersey Shore and I looked at some thrift stores and antique stores and found some pretty cool things. Now I've been coming here for years so I've been to a lot of these stores before and I know that you could find some pretty cool things if you have the right eye for it. A few years ago I picked up this Atari system and a few years before that I found some cool video games. So you never know what you're going to find, especially when it's outside of your normal shopping area. So let's take a look at what I saw and then we're going to see what I picked up from my recent trip. Of course it isn't a shore vacation without going to the beach and riding some nonsensical gibberish in the sand. But after that I felt like thrifting. This was the first thrift store I visited. It seems like they are now under new management and with it the prices have unfortunately gone way up. The first thing I saw when I walked in here was this Apple Time Capsule. It was a 2 terabyte model, it was one of the older ones, and it was $40. Not something I needed to pick up, a bunch of Wii games and stuff in there as well, so uh, I passed by that cabinet. They also had an iPod camera connector kit, again something I did not need, I already had it, but uh, it was neat to see. I didn't know how much they were asking for it, but it was probably too much. Then I walked over to this counter and yeah, my assumptions were confirmed. They were going a little bit crazy here. This Pokemon game here for $150 without the Pokewalker Tamagotchi thing. Yeah, that's that's silly. That's just really silly. However, apparently that Fire Emblem game was $50 lower than some of the ones selling for on eBay. So who knows? The same thing for this Disney Infinity set. Uh, this game uh, could be had for a few dollars and these figures maybe I don't know two to four dollars max uh, I don't understand why anybody would pay twenty five dollars for that this was another peculiar thing it looked like a CD player or a sound bar or anything but fifty dollars and no remote control hard pass they had a bunch of cool looking cameras now unfortunately all these displays had these little alarms on it and this was completely the opposite of how this store used to be you could pick up and look at things and so on and so forth i don't know if they had problems or what but you couldn't open these cabinets up without an alarm going beep 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 so you know it was kind of annoying because i wanted to take a look at some of these cameras and i couldn't but at the prices they were charging mm, i don't think i was going to walk out with any of them anyway so i didn't bother looking at them too much there was some vintage computer software here. I did ask the attendant to open it up as I wanted to take a look at this Game Blaster box here. And unfortunately the hardware is not in the box and I opened it up, there were a few discs inside and I told the guy to put it back and he looked at me sort of confused and I said the hardware is missing, that just has a bunch of discs in it. I think this is just another example of people pricing things based on what they think they have, not realizing that some parts may be missing or they don't exactly have what they think they saw on an online listing, etc. Then I saw this HDTV antenna, and while $45 may not seem like a lot, I've seen brand new ones for less than that, so I wouldn't necessarily pay that much for a used item that I couldn't return if it didn't work. Then there's this little Kobe black and white CRT television. Really nice, it has the box. $20 may be a bit much, especially considering it is a black and white model, and you can't really receive anything off of that antenna anymore but I guess maybe somebody else might think that's a good deal. Here we have one of these digital film and slide converter or scanner things. I don't know if this is necessarily a good branded one or whatever, but $40, uh, I think you could pretty much get them brand new for $40 to $50 and a good one too. So I don't think that's necessarily a good deal and I passed on that as well. Whenever I see laser discs, I get excited, even if they're misspelled. So I took a look at the discs that they had there. There wasn't anything that really caught my eye, although I did end up picking up a few. It's always nice to see these out in the wild, especially since the individuals knew that they were laser discs and not records. So it was nice to be able to see those and pick a few of them up. They were only $5 each, which isn't a horrible price. I've seen them much cheaper, but it's much better than people thinking that they're worth $10, $20, or $30 each. One of the last things I saw was this Apple ADC to DVI adapter. Now this caught my eye because you don't see many of these out in the open. Now this was $20, I did have the guy taken out of the case so I could take a look at it, and I did ask him if he knew if it worked. He said it was untested and that's why it was so cheap. Now $20 in my opinion for one of these adapters untested is not necessarily a good deal. However, it looked to be in fairly good cosmetic condition, so I did decide to take a chance on it. The seller didn't really know what it was and assumed it was a power adapter for a laptop. Here we have a Tiger Electronics Star Wars Quiz Whiz. 
This is an electronic game with these little booklets, and how this works is these booklets have a bunch of questions inside, you slide it into the piece of plastic, and then you use the buttons on there to answer the questions that the booklet is asking you. I did ask the seller to take this out of the case, and when I removed the battery cover, there was a lot of corrosion. So I did ask them to put in some fresh batteries to see if it worked. It did, so I sort of felt like I had to buy it at that point, so I did. I think that I may have overpaid a little bit for it, but if I could just clean up those battery contacts, I think it'll work fine, and it'll be something fun to play around with. So I left that thrift store and went to another one. This store was one of those types where there are a lot of little booths that are set up by individual sellers, so you have a wider variety of particular items. Now you don't see these too often. This is a Kodak disc camera. This is a disc 6000 camera, and I do have a unit like this, so I did not end up picking this up, but this is from 1982, or so the tag claims, and they were only asking $27 for it. It did have the case, which I guess was used for display purposes, and some film in there, but to my knowledge, you cannot get this film developed anymore. So although it was tempting, especially with the original price tag on there and everything, I did pass on this, although I do think these cameras are pretty neat. I didn't end up getting this Star Wars figure here, but it reminded me of when I went to the Target stores when they first opened to try and get this exclusive toy. This was something that was really cool, it was around the time the Revenge of the Sith film came out, and this was a lava reflection Darth Vader, which of course wasn't really in the film or anything, but I thought it was so cool it was one of those really hard to find figures at the time, and it was here for like $10. I was very tempted to pick it up, but I have so many of these figures that I don't really do anything with right now, so I decided to pass on it. I did take a look at some of these movie buttons. There were a lot of cool ones mixed in here. I actually found some Sega ones, so I picked those up and a few of the other odd ones as well. Personally, I always like looking through these pins and stuff. It's always weird finding these advertisements and these buttons and stuff for movies and games that you just never saw before. I thought this was neat. I never knew they made X-Files figures or dolls like this before, so I took a picture of that. Now, this was sort of disturbing. Um, I love Firefly. I think it's a great series. And, oh my goodness, to take one of the most beloved characters and make a figure of them? Ugh. This figure doesn't even look like the character. I mean, at all. Ugh. I took a picture of this sign because I thought it was neat. Steven's Auctioneering. Maybe I'll get into that one of these days. Now it was on to a different thrift store. This was a tiny little hole in the wall shop in a mini mall, and they had a lot of DVDs. A lot of them were of questionable legality. And then there was this <laughs> 10 movie kids pack. I have no idea what these movies are. I've never even heard of them. And uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think I'll pass on that. They also had an assortment of earphones that were just stuck to the wall there for a dollar. Um, yeah, no thanks. Now this did catch my eye because I do have some film cameras that use these older types of batteries. And a few years ago I did pick up these rechargeable types, but they didn't last too long. So I actually did pick this up for $5. It had a set of two batteries and it had the charger and it actually had a car charger as well. Whether these batteries will fit the exact camera I need them to is to be determined. However, for $5, I was willing to take that chance. I found this Universal Remote, which I thought was pretty cool. It still had the Radio Shack sticker on there, and it was only a dollar. It looked like it was in excellent condition, and if it was used, well, they put it back very carefully. I love this type of stuff, so I figured, hey, for a buck, even if I don't end up using it, it makes for a great prop. So I definitely decided to pick that up. On to another store. This was, well, it was an interesting store. They had pretty much a little bit of everything and it was scattered all about. It was a very tiny store, so things were sort of placed about in such a way where you had to be very careful about walking through. However, I did find some cool things here. They did have a lot of electronics and they had some DVDs and records. I did find more laser discs here, so that was really cool. I actually ended up picking up a nice box set. They also had a fair amount of DVD players and VCRs and things, and hidden inside of that stack was this, an Atari floppy drive. This connects up to several of Atari's 8-bit computers of the time. I have one of these already, but it's not often that you do find these out in the wild. And for an asking price of $10, I was ready to buy it. Well, at least I tried to. See, the seller insisted that they had the power cord and told me to come back another day once they had found it. The problem being, their schedule was not as what they advertised on their front door, and they were closed for the next few days. 
Of course, I was on vacation, so I didn't have an unlimited amount of time to come back to this store. This made me regret not being more firm, but a few days later, after some trial and error, I actually found myself at that store while they were open. It was actually the final day of my trip. But again, the seller went through the motions of claiming that they had the power adapter. They refused to look at the photo of the power brick that I pulled up on my phone to show them what to look for. So I very much doubted they actually had it. They went through the motions of asking their poor employees to shuffle through some of the miscellaneous boxes and look for this cable. But since my car was already packed up and I was ready to head home, I was eventually able to convince them that I'd still buy it for the $10 without the cable, and they were able to give it to me. I still think it's a good deal, even if it needs some fixing. It came with the data cable, so that's a nice bonus. So even though the owners were a bit, eh, interesting, they did have a lot of cool stuff. So here's some of the other things I saw at that store. I did see this JVC boxed VCR. I love JVC VCRs, I think they are of an exceptional build quality, and I have a few in my collection, one being a boxed one as well. So I did take a picture of this to think about it and return later, and it turns out this is a PAL VCR, so no wonder it's here. Uh, nobody, unless I guess you have PAL tapes, would really be able to use that in this country, so I left that there, although it was interesting to see. There was also this Canon bubble jet printer. Now, a lot of the Canon printers and the internals of them were reworked and rebranded into Apple style writers, so this was tempting to pick up. However, I don't really need another inkjet printer in my house, so I decided to pass on it, even though it did look like it had the manuals and all the paper guides and all that stuff. I ended up leaving the best store for last, and this is actually one of my favorite thrift stores. It's more of a charity thrift store, their prices are very reasonable. The only time I ever spent a lot of money at this store was actually a few years ago, picking up this Atari 8-bit computer, and yeah, I don't know what it is with Atari 8-bit machines and accessories and this town, but yeah, that was something like $125 or something like that, but it ended up working, so that wasn't bad at all. But anyway, back to this visit, I walked in and my wife showed me they had all these little inkjet cartridges and things like that. I didn't see anything that really stood out. I was looking for maybe some old Apple or Canon ones that would work in some of my style writers or something like that, but I didn't see anything, so I ended up just walking on by. Now, they do have this awesome media room in the back, and this is where all the electronics usually are. They have video games, they have DVDs, a wall of VHS tapes and stuff like that, but they also have all these cables. I mean, it's just overwhelming. I usually spend the majority of my time in the store in this little cubby area. There's a lot of different areas on these shelves to look into. There are a lot of little things that you have to move around just to see what's hiding behind there. So I do spend a lot of time in this room just trying to see what is hidden behind here. But by spending some of that extra time, I did end up finding a few cool things that I might have otherwise not have noticed. I'm not a huge big box PC game collector, but this Ultra Pinball Creep Night box, I don't know, it seemed interesting. And for only a few dollars, I thought, why not? This store had pretty reasonable prices for its media. The videotapes were only 50 cents each, and the DVDs were only $1.50. This was much, much better than the previous store, which had much higher prices. I spent quite a lot of time looking through these bins just to see if I missed anything, because a few years ago I found an Apple Talk Local Talk coupler adapter, so that was a good find, and I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing out on anything else. And this caught my eye, these HP printable tattoos for your iPod? Well, you have to remember, for a period of time, HP was actually selling iPods with their branding on it. This was a deal that they had with Apple that HP would install iTunes pre-installed on all of their PCs, and they would be able to sell iPods. And, well, I guess HP wanted to have some accessories to sell as well. So, yeah, I guess you could get these packs of tattoos or stickers. They came in packs of 10, at least this one did. I've never seen these before. They're pretty interesting. There's one printout that's already on here that, uh, well, it's weird. But we'll take a look at that at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. You never know what you're going to find until you look around. And this was a pack of 10 floppy disks in the box, which was pretty neat. These are just your standard 1.4 meg discs, and it was missing two out of the pack, but for only $3, I thought, yeah, sure, let's go for it. And speaking of floppy disks, the much larger floppy disks, we have this nice, tandy five and a quarter inch floppy disk case. I already have a few of these, but it never hurts to have more. Had the plastic dividers intact, and it was in pretty good shape. So for $4, it was a no brainer. There was also this modem box, but inside was a hard drive, okay. For $10, I wasn't going to risk it because this thing probably didn't work. 
There was this nice camera bag here, $45 for a film camera, some film, and some additional accessories in there. Not a bad deal, especially considering that other thrift store wanted more than $50 to $100 just for a camera. Now, of course, all these cameras are different, but I thought that's not a bad price for somebody who just wants to play around with this stuff. Had all the accessories, the manuals, etc. Not a bad deal, I didn't need any of it, but pretty cool to see. There was a small shelf with a stack of discs on it, so I pulled them down just to see if there was anything of interest. There wasn't really. The date you were born, really? Um, but yeah, there was nothing of my particular taste here, so I decided to just leave them be on the shelf for someone else to get. Then I saw this display of video games. Oh my goodness, there was something here for everybody. They had a great selection of Super Nintendo games. They had Nintendo games as well. They had F-Zero, Zelda, Mega Man, Super Metroid, Uniracers, Turtles in Time. They had Nights into Dreams. I had a lot of this stuff, so I did not end up picking a lot of it up. However, the gem here was this Super Nintendo console. $40? Really? That's a heck of a good price. I did end up picking up Mario Paint. It had the cartridge and the plastic mouse pad. I did not have the mouse pad, I already had the game in pretty rough shape, and the mouse, so I thought, hey, this will be nice to complete that collection. Below the video games, there was a selection of big box PC software. Again, nothing I really had an interest in, so I decided to move on. But this did make me think, what else did the store have? So I began wandering around, they had a few different rooms. There were some additional electronics scattered throughout the store, but what really caught my eye was this beauty. This is a Smith Corona PWP 4400 Plus word processor. And my goodness, what a word processor. Now, I've always had an interest in these, but since there are so many typewriters and word processors out there, I was very picky on the ones that I would purchase. And my goodness, did this model check all those boxes. First off, it had a printer built in, yes. And it had a built in floppy drive, heck yeah. And last but not least, the beautiful 14 inch VGA black and white monitor that plugs right into it. Yeah, there was no question about it. This was coming home with me. The original price tag tells me that this has been here for some time. They have knocked it down to a third of the original asking price. I asked one of the clerks there if it was okay if I plugged it in, and they seemed very happy that I had any interest at all in it. And to my delight, when I plugged everything in, it seemed to work flawlessly. The screen was nice and bright as well, so this was an awesome find. I never would have expected to find this, but here we are. So now we're back home and we're taking a look at some of the stuff that I picked up, and this typewriter word processor thing is pretty cool. So let's set it up and see how it works. Oh yeah, now let's run this built-in demo. Overall, it seems to be working just fine. There are some instances where the letters aren't being printed correctly. I don't know if that has to do with the daisy wheel mechanism or the ink or anything like that, but I'm sure those things can be either replaced or fixed up. But enough of this exclusive quiet ASMR printing system, let's move on. This modem I actually picked up before vacation, so you didn't see it before, However, it was only $5 and it had a macOS logo right on the front of it, so this was a really cool find. Here are some of the games that I picked up. I forgot to mention I did pick up Virtual Fighter 2 because those Sega Saturn long box cases are very fragile, so it's always nice to find one intact. While we're here, let's take a look at those iPod stickers and... Okay, well... Art is in the eye of the beholder, I guess? So now we can see how you're supposed to print these out and the way you're supposed to put the paper into the printer, so... That's pretty neat. Then there's the sticker side on the other, so you can sort of see as I hold this up to the light what parts are supposed to go on what part of the iPod. I guess they didn't use this sticker because they didn't print this out in the correct orientation. Oh well. Here are some of the laser discs that I had picked up, as well as that Star Wars Quiz Whiz game, and of course the Apple ADC to DVI adapter. I wonder what percentage of the questions that are in those booklets are actually no longer canon. Hmm. 
and I suppose this may be a good time to see if this adapter was worth the price we paid. So I have this cinema display that I picked up that was, well, basically trash. It has a few scratches on it, but I didn't want to see it get thrown out. So I don't even know if it works, but let's try it with this adapter. So everything is plugged in, but the display isn't lighting up. I've heard these are finicky, so let me unplug it again. And how about that? It came to life! So although this disposed of display is not in the best condition, our adapter works, which is wonderful. So for $20, we got a working adapter. Awesome. Here's that lovely realistic universal remote control. This was only $1 and it's in fantastic shape. It looks like it's never been used. Here's that Atari floppy disk drive that was a bit hard to actually purchase. And here are some of those promotional pins or badges that I picked up. I think these Sega ones are really cool. Unfortunately, the Atari floppy drive does have some broken plastic and is a bit dirty, but for only $10 with the data cable, I still don't think it was a bad price. So I hope you enjoyed looking at some of the things that I found on my trip. It just goes to show you there are some really good deals out there still. I mean, those Super Nintendo games in that console, fantastic price. You never know what you're going to find. I know I'm not the only one who likes going to thrift stores and yard sales, so let me know in the comment section if you found anything cool recently. If you like these sort of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and hit that little bell icon too. That'll make sure that when I release a new video, you'll be notified. Don't forget, if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you can do that as well. My handle is Mac84TV. And if you want to support me on Patreon, for as little as a dollar a month, you can support my archiving efforts, that's software and scanning books and stuff like that, and get a behind the scenes look at new videos before they go live, and a lot of the behind the scenes updates that you just can't get anywhere else. So be sure to subscribe to me on Patreon if that sounds like a lot of fun. But that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you right here next time on Mac84.